Diona Perrazzo still working without a contract. Will we see the Knockouts Tag Team titles returning soon? Can we see Bullet Club in Impact Wrestling? Carl Anderson says we probably will. Heath Slater challenges Moose and a really dumb comment. Of course, another dumb comment. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. This is Cody Diener and you are listening to Shooting Up North. And remember, just give her. Woo-hoo-hoo! Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. I'm Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North. So Diona Prazo, the Knockouts Champion, as of this recording, as of me recording, it's July 31st, as of this recording, she still does not have a contract with Impact Wrestling. She is still wrestling on a per-appearance basis, according to what I'm reading, and I thought they would have had her, had her wrapped up by now. I figured by now they would have made the announcement that she signed a contract and she's a two, three-year contract uh, with Impact Wrestling. She seems very happy with Impact Wrestling, but she doesn't have that contract yet. And this gets me a little nervous. This gets me a little nervous. One, because she's a knockouts champion. Two, she's not on a contract. Three, AEW could come along NXT could come back, WWE could come back, Triple H could show up at our house and say, you know, we want you back, Uh, we'll give you this amount of money, Uh, could you come back uh, to NXT, or Cody Rhodes could say, or Tony Khan will throw a nice amount of money at her, and she has, she has, she can leave, she's not on a contract, she could sign a contract with AEW, she could sign a contract with NXT, she could sign a contract with Stardom in Japan if she wants, well, she can't travel to Japan yet, uh, but she could sign a contract with, with any company that she wants now, and what, what's dangerous about it is, again, she's a knockouts champion, and it would just be absolutely horrible for Diona Perrazzo as a knockout champion to sign with a company like AEW while she's a knockout champion and leave as the knockout champion, which would ha- which Impact Wrestling would have to declare vacant and and have yet another tournament. They, they're they're going through too much of that lately with with the whole uh, Tessa Blanchard thing. Um, it's happened before in the past where they had to strip somebody of the title and and make it vacant. We don't want to go that route anymore. We don't want to go that route anymore. Please, they got to get her on the contract. They absolutely have to get Diona Perrazzo on the contract. Uh, they put the title on her. I think I, I'm thinking they put the title on her, thinking that that she was going to sign that contract as soon as they put the title on her. Again, I, I the thing is I just I just don't want her to leave. Man, I'm I'm a big Perazzo fan, and I'm glad she's a knockout champion. But I would be I would I would feel more secure <laughs> if they had her under contract. I don't like this per appearance basis and putting the title on somebody. Um, on a per appearance basis, because like I said, I thought she'd be under contract by now. And uh, Scott Demore, Don Callis, you know, I, I'm, sh- I'm sure they offered her a contract. I'm sure they offered her uh, a contract. I'm sure it's on the table. Maybe she's just still thinking about it. I, I don't know what's going on, but Scott Demore, Don Callis, just get her wrapped up for at least two years. And like I said, she's she said she's very happy. She just did an interview with with Madison Rain where she broke down crying, talking about. Being the 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 knockout champion, I didn't watch the whole video. I, I I read that she broke down crying, so I've yet to see that actual video. Uh, so I don't know if they talk about the contract in that video, uh, but she seems to like it here. Next step, and it's a huge step. Get 
her under contract. Very, very important. I like I said, I don't want Tony Khan opening up his briefcase full of money uh, to bring her over because 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 Lord knows AEW AEW needs to to jack up their women's division and Diona Perazzo would be a great addition to their women's division. But I don't want that. I want her to remain in Impact Wrestling. So my plea to Scott Demore and Don Callis is. Get that contract written up, present it to Deonna Perrazzo, if you haven't done that already, but make sure you give her a pen that works and have her sign that contract. Lock her up for two or three years. Please, Just let's just get it done, Impact Wrestling. Let's just get it done. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. The, uh, we're going to stick with the knockouts. The knockouts tag team titles. I would love to see the knockouts tag team titles return to impact wrestling i know bq has talked about it uh it's been rumored on on the internet that it's coming back i'm hoping it comes it's coming back as a matter of fact i'm going to predict i'm going to predict that by bound for glory there will be the the knockouts tag team titles and it's either they're either gonna either gonna have champions by then or the final match of a Knockouts Tag Team title tournament will take place at Bound for Glory. So I'm saying by Bound for Glory, this is my prediction, by Bound for Glory, there will be a Knockouts Tag Team title. And of course, we'll have the tournament, which which I think will be fantastic. And you'll need at least eight teams for that tournament. I know when they had the 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 inaugural TNA Knockouts Tag Team Title, uh, there were eight teams. So you need you're gonna need at least eight teams for this tournament. Um, I think eight teams will, will be just fine. And and the teams they have right now, you think about it, it'll be Tyre and Rosemary, um, Tasha Steeles and Kira Hogan, of course, uh, Nevaeh and Jessica Havoc, Susie and Kylie Ray would be a team. And then you're thinking you you need to um, you would need to get. Uh, Four more teams. So you could look to Madison Rain, of course, uh, to team with Alicia Edwards, or maybe Madison Rain teaming with uh, Katie Forbes, Alicia Edwards. Uh, you, Alicia Edwards could um, they could bring in Alexi Nicole. Alicia Edwards could team with Alexi Nicole. Uh, there's a um, very talented woman up here in Canada, Jody Threat. Um, she would be a, a good addition, and and Kimberly. Oh, if they get Kimberly, if they get Lefisto down here to team with Kimberly. Uh, and and put them in the tournament. That would be absolutely fantastic. So there's a lot of possibilities there. Lacey Ryan, they've used in the past. They could bring her into team with somebody. So there's a lot of a lot of possibilities. And of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the bold prediction, even though they haven't announced it yet. You know, I know I predicted that there's gonna be um, the tag team titles by Bound for Glory. Uh, I'm predicting the the fir- the, the first champions uh, when they bring these titles back. Going to be Tasha Steeles and Kiera Hogan. Tasha Steeles and Kiera Hogan, without a doubt, will be the first. I, I shouldn't say the first, but will be the next knockouts tag team um, title holders. And I, I know Kiera Hogan is all for uh, bringing back the tag team titles. A lot of people are, and I'm sure it's being discussed um, in Impact Wrestling right now. And it'll be back. It's coming. Don't worry. It, it, it'll be back. It's coming, and um, I'm looking forward to it. And I think Tasha Steeles, Kara Hogan, a great team. I think they will be a when they bring the titles back. I think they will be um, tremendous champions. Uh, they could continue the feud with uh, Nevaeh and Havoc, which is which is a really good feud right now. I'm really enjoying that feud. Um, oh gosh, I'm, I'm thinking about Lefisto and Kimberly as a tag team. That would be uh, that would be fantastic for. Tasha Steeles, Kiera Hogan defending the the knockouts tag team titles against Kimberly and Lefisto would be would be absolutely fantastic, and I would love for them to bring in Lefisto. And Lefisto was all for it, uh, but the only thing is they need to be a little concerned because there's a there's a uh, petition out right now for Lefisto to go to AEW and challenge uh, Cody for the TNT uh, championship. And and I know once they see her work, and I'm sure they have, but once they see her in AEW. Um, very good chance that they would want to sign her and add it to the women's division. So Impact Wrestling would have to move quickly here. <laughs> again, with Yona Perrazzo, they need to lock her up. And again, uh, here with Lofisto, it would just be fantastic. It would be fantastic to get Lofisto in Impact Wrestling. Uh, but again, they would have to move quickly. They would have to move quickly. But even if they don't get Lofisto, there's a lot of talent out there that they could bring in uh, to um, round out the 10 teams. 
So um, I, I I hope they announce it soon. I hope they announce it soon, and I hope they get this title tournament going because it's like I said, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. They're gonna bring it back. There's 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 so much talk about it right now, and um, I'm I'm certain that they're going to bring it back. And once again, Tasha Steele's Kara Hogan. They will be the the next knockouts tag team champions. Hey, right, moving along, moving along. The Bullet Club and Impact Wrestling. Could it happen? Very, very good chance that it will happen. Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson were on um, discussing on a podcast, Wrestling with Sports. Uh, they were discussing um, on how the WWE, um, they, they dropped the ball with the Bullet Club and uh, that uh, Impact Wrestling could actually pick up that ball. And uh, he suggested that there could be a working relationship soon between Impact Wrestling and New Japan. I know I spoke about it last, uh, my last podcast, um, how the Good Brothers uh, may be able to help uh, bring peace between Impact Wrestling and New Japan. And now he's really he's openly talking about it. And he said at the very least there could be some crossover appeal, crossover matches uh, in what they do with the, in both brands. So... We could see the Bullet Club. And they said, is there going to be a Bullet Club um, at some point in Impact Wrestling? And Carl Anderson basically said, he said 100%. 100%. And I'm instantly thinking, wow, evil in Impact Wrestling. I'm thinking, oh, Jay White in Impact Wrestling. I'm thinking, oh, gosh, this the, the it's just endless. But then, then, then I'm thinking, would they bring those guys in? Would they bring those guys in? Or would they form their own Bullet Club here in Impact Wrestling? So when they're when they're in Japan, New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, they could be with Evil and um, Tonga Loa and Tama Tonga. And, but when they come back to Impact, there'll be another group of, of uh, Bullet Club wrestlers in Impact, such as, I don't know, Sammy Callahan or... or, or, or um, Ken Shamrock in Bullet Club, something like that. Uh, but but I, I would love to see Evil coming in. Uh, to uh, Evil is uh, the current IWGP, IWGP uh, heavyweight champion and the uh, intercontinental champion in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Love to see him come in. We'd love to see the North go against uh, Tamatanga and Tangaloa. Um, that'd be, just be a fantastic match. So the possibility is there. The possibility is there, and Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows are really openly talking about it now on how they want this uh, working agreement between Impact and New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I, I think we're going to see it soon. I think, well, like, like I said, even if there's no new, uh, working agreement, uh, there could be um, crossover matches, a crossover appeal, which would be very, very exciting for Impact Wrestling. And I'm very happy this, that when he said that the WWE dropped the ball with the Bullet Club. Because the WWE, they don't, they're just they're dropping the ball with everything. Their ratings are going down, and, and they're dropping the ball with everything lately. And Bullet Club and Impact Wrestling would, would just really elevate Impact Wrestling to another level. Really elevate it to another level, and they have the opportunity to do it right. And with Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows you know, leading the way, you know, the sky's the limit right now. The sky is the limit right now for Impact Wrestling. Very, very exciting. Very exciting. And I can see once they start, they start wrestling in front of crowds again. Yeah, I I think Impact Wrestling is going to be they're going to be in um, bigger venues. They're going to be in bigger venues when they're able to um, get in front of a crowd, especially if they could bring in you know people from from New Japan Pro Wrestling, and uh, with all the new additions, it's just you know I say this a lot, <laughs> but it's it's a, just a tr- terrific time. Terrific time to be an Impact Wrestling fan, and I really hope that they keep this momentum going because it's absolutely fantastic. It's just a tremendous ride right now, and um, just keep that momentum going. All right, so let's talk about just some of the things that I liked and some of the things that I didn't like about the last uh, last Impact Wrestling show. One thing I really liked was Wrestle House. I thought that was just tremendous. I thought it was a lot of fun watching. I really enjoyed Wrestle House. People are actually online right now saying Netflix needs to get this on as a one-hour show. Um, put it on YouTube, I've been hearing, as a, as a standalone show. Put it on Impact Plus. Put it on Impact Plus as a, as a show. It was fantastic. And I, I love the fact that disputes 
need to be resolved in the ring. It's just it's just fantastic to watch. I absolutely loved it. And you know Johnny Swinger. This is the t- these are the type of of sketches that Johnny Swinger excels in that he needs to be in. And it was just fantastic. And um, I I'm looking forward to seeing the next episode. And uh, I I do hope that uh, it does really gain in popularity because I know it's very popular. A lot of people are, are praising it, and I would love to see it become a standalone show, um, either on uh, I don't know if it'll be Netflix, but um, to get on Impact Plus or or the Impact Wrestling YouTube channel. Um, really enjoyed it. I just can't say enough on on how much I I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed Wrestle House. Um, Eddie Edwards open challenge. I like this. I like this. I like that, that they announced that Eddie Edwards is going to have the open challenge. I know people are going to be saying, oh, he's copying Cody Rhodes and the TNT championship open challenge. But, you know, Cody Rhodes is in the first wrestler in the history of professional wrestling to have an open challenge. Uh, so he's not uh, stealing it from Cody Rhodes because well, who's Cody Rhodes stealing it from? John Cena? And uh, no, so he's not stealing it from anybody. Uh, but I like this fact. I, I I hope that they don't just limit it to Impact Wrestling wrestlers. I hope anyone can challenge for this. Um, I know there are still uh, some free agents out there. Um, Rusev is still out there. I know he's came down with the COVID nineteen, and he says he's not a wrestler anymore, which is you know I don't believe that. Uh, but um, Rusev coming in for the open challenge would be would be fantastic. Um, there are other guys out there. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think on who <coughs> Leo Rush is out there. So there there are wrestlers out there that they haven't signed. That um, that would make interesting opponents for Eddie Edwards in this open challenge. So I, I really enjoyed that. I really liked it, and and I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to seeing who his opponents are in in the upcoming weeks. Um, Heath Slater. Heath Slater challenged Moose. Now there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. What I didn't like about this segment was there was Scott Demore coming out and saying that if you beat Moose next week you'll have a spot on the Impact Wrestling roster. Didn't like that because basically all that's doing is copying what the WWE did with Heath Slater a few years ago. Well, I think it was a few years ago, but but nonetheless, whenever they did it, it was Heath Slater wanted to earn a spot on the, on the WWE roster, but he had to win a match, and a few weeks went by, and he kept losing. Eventually, he he earned that contract, uh, but they're doing the same thing here, and I'm not sure why they feel they need to copy that storyline, because uh, I I don't think he's going to beat Moose next week. I don't think Heath Slater is going to beat Moose. I'd be very very surprised if Heath Slater beats Moose next week. Uh, but if he loses, he doesn't have a spot on the roster, and what does that mean? That means he has to earn and try and try and win another match, uh, challenge somebody else, and it's going to go on for a few weeks and just just a a um. Just, just copying the WWE. You know, do, do, do they have to do that? Unless somehow that they're they're trying to poke fun at the WWE for for doing a silly storyline. I, I don't know, but but whatever they're trying to do, I, I'm not a fan. Um, I I didn't like that at all. Uh, Sammy Callahan going into a feud with RVD. I'm not really a fan of that. Not really a fan of that. Um, there seemed to be a lot of comedy. There seemed to be a lot of comedy on this episode of uh, of the last episode of Impact Wrestling. Uh, you had Wrestle House, which I thought was brilliant. Uh, then you had the Rascals um, with uh, Suicide, you know, you know, getting high and Suicide, you know, doing the dancing and, and acting high. And then you had Sammy Callahan throwing his face on on Katie Forbes' body. So it was it was almost like it was. <laughs> The Impact Wrestling Comedy Night. It was the Impact <laughs> Amateur Comedy Night at at uh, at Impact Wrestling, uh, but a lot of comedy. But but I didn't the, going into a few with RVD. Um, not really into that. The reason is 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 he gonna is he gonna lose to Rob Van Dam? I mean, he's supposed to be. He, here's what here's here's. Here's what I wanted. Here's what I wanted. What maybe they should have done was Eric Young should have came in and should have went right after uh, Sammy Callahan right from the start. Just just get that feud going because Sammy Callahan against Eric Young is is an exciting feud. 
a very exciting feud. And that's what I was kind of hoping they would would have gone with uh, from the get-go. Sure, we're going to see it down the road, but I think from the get-go, Sammy Callahan against Eric Young would have been a, a terrific feud. I'm, I'm not really looking forward to Sammy Callahan going one-on-one with Rob Van Dam. I'm just, I'm, I'm, some people out there might feel differently than me, but you now I'm, I'm just, I have this fear that Callahan is going to lose to Rob Van Dam. And Callahan's been doing a lot of losing lately. You know, since he become the hacker, I think he's won one match since he um, became this, this hacker character. He's won one match, and I would hate to see him get into a feud with RVD and wind up losing to Ron Van Dam. So I, I just, uh, not not a fan of that. Not a fan of that at all. Uh, but Eddie Edwards against Trey Miguel was, was a really good match. And uh, the Good Brothers, uh, they had a great debut against... Um, Reno Scum. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was it was a good episode. It was a very good episode, as always, uh, for Impact Wrestling. So let's move on. Let's move on to a really, really, really dumb comment that I came across. Actually, BQ was kind of involved in this as well. Uh, so I'm just going to speak about this one really silly comment. Uh, so it was uh, the Good Brothers uh, on Impact saying uh, it was a post. Uh, Impact Wrestling Post. Uh, um, Gallows on it was Gallows on Impact. It's a creative liberty liberty that we've never had before. So somebody posts comments on it, and they and they, their comment is also known as two guys too scared to join AEW. So so this guy is is saying that Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson are quote-unquote, too scared to join AEW. Okay, so this is this is basically what it's, it's, it's come down to. This is basically what it's come down to. AEW fans, still upset, still upset. They can't believe that Anderson and Gallows have signed with Impact Wrestling. They can't believe that this has happened. And now they're resorting to saying, well, they were too scared to sign with AEW. Why in the world would anyone think that Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson were too scared to sign with AEW? Why would anybody think that? I mean, what, what would they think that Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson were, they had an AEW and an Impact Wrestling contract on the table and they said, oh, you know what? You know what? Um, we're going to sign with Impact Wrestling uh, just because we're too scared to sign with AEW. You know, did they think that that was an actual conversation between Luke Gallows and and um, Carl Anderson? Do they do they really think that that's the reason why they didn't sign with 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 AEW? Is because they were too scared. The reason why they signed with Impact Wrestling is because Impact Wrestling gave them a tremendous deal, much better than anything AEW was offering them. That's why they signed with Impact Wrestling. Nothing to do with them being scared. I mean, this is so stupid. This is this is what again what AEW fans who are still you know in the bathroom with their heads f- folded in their arms, you know, crying and weeping their eyes out because Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows have signed with Impact Wrestling and not AEW. Uh, they're just they're up in their rooms and the face buried in their pillows. You know, just totally, totally. Just tears flowing out of their heads because Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson have signed with Impact Wrestling. They're, they're, they just they just can't get over it. They can't get over it. Well, they're going to have to get over it because for the next two years, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson are members of the Impact Wrestling roster. And there's nothing that they can do about it. There's nothing they can do about it except whine and cry and continue to bitch about it. That's all they can do about it. Well, on that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. This has been Shooting Up North. Until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye. <laughs>